Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Southern California Housing Market Update video for, I can't believe this, June 1st, 2021. Uh, my name is Stephen Mead with Domicile Real Estate, uh, where we are real estate for people who love houses. And, um, you know, I, I think now that we've passed Memorial Day, we are, we are really officially kind of in what most people would call the summer market in Southern California. But I think the question is, this has really been a year pretty much like no other. And, you know, the question I have is, is this going to act like a summer market or not? So let's jump right into it. Um, I apologize if the audio is off a little bit. I'm kind of filming in an unusual location today. I'm actually out of town. So we'll see if we can, uh, if we can make this work. And I apologize for any audio issues. Um, so just going ahead and jumping in here into our stats, you know, kind of some mixed results, but I'm going to tell you why um, they don't quite mean what I think they mean or what they say, which is unusual. So we're going to talk about that here. So the first thing I want to talk about, right, is sort of our total active listings in the market. Really, we actually have some good news on this front. This number went up really for both our under $1 million and our $1 and $2 million categories here in Southern California, which just as a reminder is Los Angeles and Orange Counties. Um, you know, this might seem like great news. Um, I don't think it's quite as good news as we think. And the reason is this was a holiday weekend. And I think, you know, to, to any client of mine, I'm going to tell them that you know, it, it, you're going to see reduced volume on holiday weekends, really, in general, both in terms of new listings and properties going under contract. So, and if, if we go here, we really see that happen when we look at our new listings. Now, normally this would be a very alarming number to see this kind of drop over the last two weeks to just see the, that new listing number really take about a 10% dive, right, versus the past you know, and, and to take us kind of back to, you know, sort of the end of April. Um, we see kind of a similar thing happen here in our uh, one to $2 million category. Also, we see a dive. But the reality is this was a bit of an unusual weekend. Um, because it's the holiday weekend, I actually don't think a, you know, a 10, 15% drop in new listings is really that big of a deal. And when we go here and we look at the other side of the coin, right, if this is new listings or supply, we look at demand or new escrows, what do we see? We actually see that that number also went down, but not by nearly as much, right? And you know what that tells me is that you know demand is still strong. Sellers may have said, I don't feel like putting my house on the market this weekend. And buyers said, well, we have to look at everything that comes up for sale. So if you're here and you're kind of looking at this, right? Um, you know, what does this tell you? It tells you that we're still in a supply constricted market. We have not reached some equilibrium tipping point where supply has outstripped the demand for housing. The fact that supply fell off and demand only fell off slightly means that, you know, these buyers are still out here in the marketplace. And if there's a little bit of a lull, they're going to take advantage of it. Uh, if we look at our absorption rate, you know, again, I want to caution you against reading too much into these numbers because they are a little bit of wonky because of the holiday weekend you see that we are heading back towards sort of a 90% absorption rate. Remember, that's sort of our mark where the, where the market really turns crazy, and that's for under 1 million. But, you know, we also see a corresponding rise in that $1 to $2 million mark. Um, we have something else that we're going to talk about a little bit later, which is that interest rates also dropped this past week a little bit. That always kind of gives us somewhat of a push, right? You know, the buyers see that, and they think, I got to strike while the iron's hot. I don't want to wait until interest rates go up again. If we look at our closed prices, and again, just a reminder, this is based on data that is four to six weeks old. So these are contracts that were negotiated four to six weeks ago. We see increases really across the board, all the way from our entry level 25th percentile and our median, and then also at our 75th percentile or high end of the market, we saw really increases across all three after kind of a prolonged period of holding steady. Um, you know, I think what we didn't see is the market doesn't look like this, right? I think most of us, uh, if you've been following this market, you know what this part here felt like. And that part just really felt like prices were rising quickly. 
Now, this is a stat we started doing that kind of gives us an idea of market movement, right? And that's still active after 14 days on the market. Uh, one of the things you're going to notice is this is another one that's skewed a little bit by a holiday weekend. And the reason being is, you know, when we look at all the homes that came on the market, right, most of those mar ones that came on the market in the last 14 days, they came on the market more than seven days ago. They did not come on the market right before the holiday weekend. So that's going to skew these numbers upward a little bit. So I really want to see what happens um, next week. I don't think uh, you know, these are quite as bad as it as it sounds. So, uh, you know, I'm real curious to see sort of where these numbers end up next week. I think we still have an absorption rate that looks pretty strong. But, you know, my gut feeling is that I don't want to use the term cooling on our market because I don't think that's accurate. I think what we really have in our market is that it is a little bit closer to just a, 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 this, a normal strong seller's market. Uh, rather than the circus-like market we've been seeing. Finally, there's something kind of interesting, and 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 I'm finding this one kind of fascinating. This is our close to list ratio. So what this is, is we take a look back and we say, where did the houses actually end up closing versus their list price? So if you look at this under 1 million category, you know, we're, we're still closing one, you know, almost 103% of list price on average, right? So that means still, in, you know, an, the average $600,000 house is closing at over 618, right? But what we, what I find fascinating is that how much we've kind of fallen a little bit. And I think what this means is that sellers are finally catching up with the market. They're getting very, very optimistic with their list prices, right? They're, before they would have said, you know, I can put any, before they would have said, well, this is what the cops say, let's put it on the market and then it goes over. I think now what you see sellers are doing is saying, hey, it's a hot market. I can put whatever price I want. Let's see what happens. And that's really manifesting itself in we're getting closer on average to those list prices. I do think it's interesting our one to two million has accelerated a little bit further. I'm not really sure what's going on there in that upper end price range. Um, you know, there might be a little bit of an inventory squeeze. If we look at days on market, right, which is, I think is kind of a, a great corroborating factor when we're talking about market health. When we look at this days on market for our new contracts, I mean, we've really been stuck at sort of this, this point of about, you know, 18, 19 days in the market for under 1 million. I mean, it just feels like it can't get any faster than that. We've just really held steady at that line. But look what's happened over time to that one to two million. This number is just gradually eroded, eroded, eroded to the point where it is about to hit this, that same sort of one or that same sort of 18 day limit that we have in our under one million. So understand we still have a very fast moving market. Um, this doesn't mean that homes are, are just sitting on the market, even if I say things are a little bit closer to normal. Finally, and th this is one of my favorite graphs to really talk about affordability in our marketplace, because I think at the end of the day, affordability is really what drives consumer behavior. And while I think it is very reasonable that the median payment is about 15% higher than it was three years ago, um, I think if it got to like 120, 130, you know, I think that would that really would be a different proposition for for buyers, right? They they would really have sort of a different calculus to their decision making. But if we look here, we're, we've been kind of really just hovering in this 110 to 115, 116 percent range in terms of that, in terms of where we are relative to 2018. And I think we're still sticking within that range. To me, that's actually a sign of a healthy market. You saw this go down a little bit. That is primarily a function of interest rates, right? So if you look here in our interest rate graph, you know, these rates were close to two and a half percent really at the beginning of the year. They've sort of done a little bit of a rising. We went kind of over three, almost to 3.2%. Then we eased back to really just under three, which is kind of where we've been hovering. We went up a little bit, then this past week we dropped a little bit. Um, I think that's a very comfortable place for consumers to be, uh, for buyers. And I, I think that really sets the stage for kind of a market that's going to continue to grow. But, you know, the interesting thing about interest rates, right, is that they change. And they often change in ways that are not exactly predicted. 
you know, the general logic I'm hearing on the street is that we accept, expect to be somewhere in kind of this 3.4 to 3.6 range by the end of the year. You know, I think that's a great educated guess. Unfortunately, I think that's all that really is. You know, I, I think there are a lot of things that can happen in our marketplace to affect that. So, you know, if you're a buyer or a seller, I think that's the danger, right? Is that there's this uncertainty factor if you wait, you know, that, that the situation might change in a way you don't like um, or that you don't predict that sort of uh, closes opportunities for you. Anyhow, thank you guys so much for watching. I know it's a little bit shorter this week. I'm, I'm out of town, but returning tomorrow. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Um, then you will see all of our content. We actually upload, we do Facebook Lives. We alternate on my personal page as well as the Domicile business page uh, each week. But if you want to see all of our videos, really being on YouTube is the best way to do that. We also have a lot of videos that we put up there that do not appear on the web pages, right? They don't appear on Facebook. So if you want to have access to those or to see those when they come out, definitely subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Uh, we're going to put the link in the YouTube description for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll talk to you again real soon.